Hi everybody, this is Sal Kalor, the UCS guy, and uh, I'm here to talk a little bit about um, VM Lincoln hardware, um, which is also called, you know, VM Facts. It's, it's known by a bunch of different terms, but basically what it is, it's the integration of the networking pieces of uh, VMware directly with UCS. So I'm going to take you through a demo and talk about some of the powerful things that the network team uh, can now get back to managing the network pieces of uh, of a VMware deployment, and and the server team will will be freed up from having to configure the DVS or configure the vSwitch on every host. So, uh, let's get right to it. So, what you see here is a UCS system, and we're going to focus on two service profiles. Uh, the first one is going to be ESX one, and the second one is going to be ESX three. So, ESX one is the traditional setup. Um, it's got four NICs, uh, two for data. Uh, one service console, one vMotion. Now, if you notice, the service console and vMotion have the failover checkbox enabled for hardware in UCS. This is a, a UCS uh, value add that, that you're able to get, uh, so you don't have to do any kind of uh, NIC bonding inside of VMware. So let's take a quick look um, in VMware what that looks like. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and log into vCenter here. And um, what you're going to see right off the bat is the uh, the first host is going to have the traditional 4NIC setup, right? So this is a host uh, right here with the traditional 4NIC setup. Um, if you go to networking, you can see it's a traditional vSwitch. It's got one adapter for the service console. I only need one because I'm using the redundancy features of UCS. And then I have two in the uh, data bearing uh, NICs that are going to go and, and point to the servers. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because uh, VMware has the capability of load balancing between those using source hash. So I'm going to go ahead and, and do that. And then down on the uh, vMotion side, I have the single interface. Um, that way, uh, I have redundancy built into UCS Manager. Um, but that's the traditional setup. That's something that you normally do on every single host. Um, now, to contrast that, let's take a look at the second host. Now, the second host here, um, if I go to the servers tab again, is ESX3. So ESX3 uh, has two NICs, data one and data two, but also it has these dynamic NICs. Now, these dynamic NICs are configured to be exposed to a VMware host. Um, so this particular host will, will have the ability of grabbing one of those dynamic NICs for every single adapter pointing to a virtual machine. So when you go into a virtual machine and you create a network adapter, it's going to use one of those ports. And then you have the VM tab enabled here. Now this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where the simplicity is really gained because all of the networking functions are handled right here. So if I look at uh, these port profiles, you can see that the QoS policy and the VLANs assigned to any particular host, um, or I should say any particular port group, are assigned in UCS Manager and then fed down to the DV switch. And then, as you can see, I get a lot of visibility now. So there's a there's a virtual machine called Ubuntu three with a with a NIC in it, and that NIC is using that 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 fourth dynamic NIC on that service profile, and it has a MAC address, etc. So what does that look like inside of VMware? So let's take a look. So if we go to this host and we go to the configuration, you can see that there's no adapters in the traditional switch, right? They're in the VDS. Now the VDS, right, is being configured by UCS Manager, okay? So if we go to the networking tab here and I click on, let's go to the top level of the VDS and I click on ports, now you could actually see that there are different ports available to us. So let's see port zero here has a MAC address of 8C0000, and if I look, this NIC has 8C0000. So you can see that the two are tied together, and the, the, the profile is using this NIC. If I click on that NIC, you can see it's sitting on Fabric A, and it has failover enabled, right? And it's set up for VMware pass-through, and this is all automatic, just as chosen uh, at random when the, when the, when the uh, virtual machine is created. And you can see it's on Ubuntu 3. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go to Hosts and Clusters here, and I'm going to pull up a console of Ubuntu 3 real quick, and, and we'll get into that. Before I go into that, the one thing it's worth showing is if I go to the Edit Settings here, uh, you can see that if I go to the Network Adapt, you see DataNet 1 out of BLV UCS DVS. Well, that's the exact same thing right here, this DataNet 1. Uh, is the is the port group that is automatically populated. 
So one kind of cool demo is if I were to go here um, in our in my port profiles here, and, and let's say I want to create a new one. Um, let's go ahead and create a new port profile. I'm going to call it, you know, uh, UCS guy one. Um, I won't set any 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 of these. I'll leave them all default. Put it in VLAN 90. Make it the native, and say OK. And now what I can actually do is create this profile client. So I'm going to call it UCS guy one. I'll put it in the DC Comwest BLV, BLV UCS, and that DDS. And when I say OK, it'll go ahead and create it. Now you see it here. And if I go into VMware, you could actually look right here and you could see the messages saying reconfigure DV port group. And if I go into the networking tab, now you can see there's one called UCS Guy 1. Right? And I could easily go to my virtual machine and I can right click and say edit settings. And if I go to the adapter, you can see it's now in the list. There's the UCS guy one as the label. So that's that's how quick and easy it is. Um, and if I wanted to change the VLAN, it would be very simple. I can just go in here and say modify VLANs and then add any number of VLANs or add new create a new VLAN, etc. So I can do all of that now from a simple interface instead of having to go to every host or go in the DDS itself and actually configure that. So that's that's really the power of it. It makes it very, very simple, very, very easy um, to, to do that. So if I go to, say, VNIC0 here, the, the thing I'm going to demo for you is um, the ability to create a span port. So that's new in version 1.4 of UCS. So if I go to the monitor session port here and I go to VNIC, you can see that I'm taking that ESX3 dynamic port 4, as you can see here, okay, and that's my span target. So if I go into the Ubuntu 3 VM and actually do an IF config, you can actually see that my my uh, my MAC address is that 8C0000, right? So if I go in there and I start ping, okay, and it's, it's pinging, I'm able to get to the network, and I'm going to go ahead and load my Wireshark now. So if I go here, and I go to Wireshark, and I do an interface list. I'm going to go ahead and choose this adapter right here. I'm going to start there. And you're able to see the ping showing up, right? If, I'm, if I go here and I stop the pings, you can see that they stop, right? And you can see the MAC address of 8C0000 in the actual uh, set up there in the actual capture. If I were to change, say, the, the size of the ping or maybe the destination or something. So let's say I ping 10.93.233.131 and I do it with a size of 10,000, let's say. Um, you can see again, you can see that I'm getting all of those pings and you can see that there are fragments because the, the it's too big for the MTU. So it goes ahead and fragments them up, sends them all over, and then you get a ping reply. So this is extremely important for you as a customer um, to be able to troubleshoot things going on. If you get a message uh, from the help desk saying, hey, you know, Exchange 3 is slow and it's a virtual machine, uh, before what you'd have to do is you'd have to evacuate all of the different VMs off of that physical host and then set a span port for the whole host. Uh, or you'd have to capture everything coming off the host, which could be probably a lot of traffic, and then um, set some filters. And so... The, the big issue that we see if you have a 10 gigabit attached host, you're going to capture quite a bit of traffic and you'll have to filter through it. It just makes it a lot harder. Um, this enables you to see not only um, do span port stuff, but also the ability to see um, statistics uh, on the switch because the, the bottom line is that this is a this is a, a port on a switch. So you're able to see it in SNMP as well. So that's the demo. 